talking. I'm talking. If you're thinking about buying the app called Mapping Total Harmony Pro to create some cool sounding harmonies, then watch this. It has some great features, but it's also got some bugs and unrefined parts that don't work as intuitively or as well as they should. And I don't regret buying the program for $20 for the iOS version, but you've got to check this out if you want to see how it works and what you're going to have to deal with if you buy the program. This week, I was planning to do a review of reharmonization softwares. But instead, what I ended up doing was buying some software uh, because I just couldn't see anything else like it. And, and I was so intrigued and, and it seemed so cool. So this week, instead of doing that review of all the softwares out there, I am actually reviewing this one software. Now, this software is not for PC. I use PCs usually. So I thought, OK, let's use my daughter's old uh, MacBook 2011. Nope, um, this operating system won't won't handle it. You cannot update beyond a certain uh, revision of the of the operating system. So then I thought, okay, how about the iPad? Uh, this is my mom's old iPad. I use this for the teleprompter. I've, I've got some uh, some certain applications I use on this. It's a great valuable tool. Nope, this version of the software does not run in on this version of uh, iPad. OK, so next was the iPhone 7. This is the phone that my wife really didn't like. It was a gift for my wife at one point and uh, she didn't like it. So I decided to use it. And this is the one that I use. Yes, this will run this software. So I bought the cheap version of the software uh, actually $20 right now on sale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the benefit of my two days playing around trying to get this to work. If you look at the reviews, there are a lot of people saying that this is difficult to use and oh my God, this is so, so awkward to use and understand. Well, I'm going to show you. This is great stuff actually and I'm going to show you how I do this on iPhone 7 and I'm going to use uh, a mirror capture software that I downloaded so that you can see what's on my iPhone. So I'm also going to take a song How Great Is Our God and this is a song that I made a guitar arrangement for using certain chords uh, a few weeks back. I thought I'd just try that and see what see what else I could come up with in terms of reharmonizing and reharmonizing that song and how you start that from scratch and all of the buttons that you need to push and the thing where you can find the things that you need. Now, one other thing is that if you buy the iPhone version, then you can also run it on an iPad. And what I found out is that you can actually download the previous version, the 7.9 version, that will run on this iPad and it's actually it's actually a lot nicer to use only the software itself is uh, is more difficult to use uh, because they they up their game with this uh, version 8 that runs on on the iPhone so I'm going to be showing you the iPhone and let's take a look okay so now I am going to show you in record time I hope how to create a song now I already have something up here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the corner. See this little guy over here? And I'm going to push that one. So what I'm going to do is push on this one right here. And it says Song Editor. Now, in this, uh, on the apps, what you have are these, uh, these little uh, things that open like this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say New. You have an option there. It says New. And it says save current progression. Whatever I have up there right now, it's not going to be saved because I'm going to say don't save. All right. Now you have a number of styles. I'm going to choose gospel. I'm going to choose. You have a choice of four or three beats. And let's see if I can get to the next part. Uh, form layout. Now this one is important because I actually don't know how to add or delete measures. 
I know that I want eight measures. I know that you can add different sections, I believe. I've seen some videos. Now, incidentally, this company has a ton of videos on how to how to uh, get around the software and how to do all these different progressions. That's one of the big advantages, and they're all free on YouTube. So I'm going to apply the changes. Now let's hope I can get out of this without messing things up. You have to be really careful because these uh, these rolling menus, it's so easy to, to mess them up, and then you find out all the settings are different from what you expected. Okay, so let's see if I can... I'm going to hold on that and pull it down. So that's the trick with this. To get rid of the menus, you just got to hold along, along the top of the menu and then pull it down. Now let's see if we have we have eight measures on the top there. So that's exactly what I want. I'm going to say save. It's saved. Oh, I forgot to put a title. So I'm going to put a title in here. Let's call this YouTube. Just so that it's different from everything else. And uh, there's some other things in here. I can put composer. Here's a thing. Now, okay. Now, here's where you might get messed up too. I'm going to say a speed of a tempo of 100. Now, how do you get rid of this number pad? Well, here's the trick. Just go back to something else so that you get the, the letters and then say done. Now, here's another little thing that you need to know. This menu along the bottom here is, uh, if you want to turn these off, you're going to have to touch the highlighted icon. If I touch that one, then now I have this dual screen thing. Now, I can turn this on its side now. The reason I didn't do that while I was setting this up is because it seems to work better when it's, uh, when it's vertical. So if I turn this on its side, let's see now if this is going to work. So there are no chords in here right now. Okay, so now what, what you do is you've got this, you have this uh, special diagram. This is, this is the most complicated one. Okay, so here's, here's what you do. You go to the, the thing that looks like a folded piece of paper, and it says Map Display Preferences. So that's right here, and I'm going to click on this one, and that's going to show uh, some options here. I'm going to scroll to where it says level. It says right now complete map. So that's got everything. So if we want to make this a little bit more simple, I'm going to go to basic diatonic. All right, and select that one. So I'm going to scroll back up, see if I can close that one, and then go back, uh, click on that little folded paper thing again, and we're back to this. And we'll see that we just have a very simplified display. Now we're back in the, dis the display. So we've got the eight bars up here and there are two two windows. If you want to resize this so that you can show more of one, what you do is you, you just touch in between those two windows and then you can slide it up or down. Now I've slid this all the way so that we can see this map now. I can, can even zoom in on that. So let me, while I've got this in uh, on the display now just to explain that the way this works is it's based on uh, on tonal harmony what this is based on is a circle of fifths and the location of the chords you'll find on around the outside of the circles uh, the major scales and on the inside of the circle is the minor scales and these chords are grouped according to whether they are tonic chords in the lower part here on the left is the subdominant chords and then on the right is the dominant chords and what it means is the subdominant are uh, have some kind of pull back to the tonic and the dominant have the strongest pull back to the tonic so that's just that's just the basic idea don't worry too much about it so if we want to get that other screen back you'll see on the top here it's there's a little icon like that you touch that one yeah, and it brings that one back. Now, if I want to resize this so I just see one line on the top, which is on an iPhone, small iPhone like this, seems to work the best. And then you can resize this. So what I'm going to do now is put some chords in here. 
that key is uh, it's in the key of G so I'm just gonna I'm just touching on the top line there this is in the key of G if I wanted to change that let me just show you how to do that if you go to okay the little paper thing yes okay so if you want to change the key right now it's in G so what you need to do is touch the key that you want to play in let's say I want to play in the key of D touch that one and you'll notice that it's changed over here is changed to D so I'm going to go back to G because that's what I want to use and click on this little uh, folded paper thing again now that chord is a G major 7 so G major 7 I don't want so if you touch on the chord it will bring you a list of options and I, I want just the basic chord where it says G Ionian don't worry about that too much either and let's see if I can get out of that screen these menus don't like to disappear unless you have this vertical so now that that is that G is there I'm going to touch on that G and that replaces the G major 7 with a G so I'm going to go forward if you keep pushing the G it's going to it's, it's going to actually forward it for you you don't have to you don't have to touch the top line but it's actually more convenient if you do so this is where the next chord is going to be the next chord is going to be an E minor now an E minor that we have here is says E minor 7 so again I'm going to touch and hold that one and I'm going to say just E minor all right we have to do this vertically so I can drag this down and then I'm going to put that E minor right there so that goes for two measures and on the next line it's going to be C so let's just have a look at our diagram here here we have a C chord is again it's a C major 7 so that one touch and hold and let's see C Ionian is right there touch and hold on the top and drag this down come on now there we go okay so let's see if I can put that chord in there just zoom in again C <clears throat> next measure will be A minor so we have A minor 7 I'm going to again I'm going to do the same thing A minor Dorian okay don't worry about these too much again okay touch and hold on the top drag it down Oh, it looks like, you know something, uh, it looks like I got more measures than, than necessary, but don't worry, let's just keep going because um, uh, I'm trying to do this fast and uh, I'm going to put this in right now. So with C going to an A minor and then going back to G. So G is already here. Okay, so let's just have a listen to this and let's see what we've got. So the way you play it is there's a little icon. It's a tiny little thing on the iPhone, but it works. So this, you should be able to hear this now. <clears throat> Now this has got a bit of a swing to it, so there's actually somehow the setting for the gospel didn't didn't make it. Okay, so that's that's that. So I'm going to go now. I'm going to go sideways again, but let's let's just keep moving forward because you know it really needs some some more work on this to make it more simple. And uh, I hope they watch. I hope they watch this because I've been I've been doing this for two days and I'm still struggling with it so they they really need to clean things up so that things make a bit more sense which player is playing you know which player is allowed to play certain types of music and all that kind of stuff so let's let's say we want to, we want to uh, spice this up a little bit what we can do is we we have some automatic tools in here you go to the hit the go to the hammer part and where it says reharmonize open this one up and let's let's look at some there are all kinds of options here Let's try a couple of things here. We're going to put we're going to put secondary diminished seventh anticipations and I'm going to say secondary five seven anticipations. Well, let's see what it does. Those can fight fight the fight between each other and uh, 2 7 interpolation 2 minus 7 interpolation. 
All right, so now that we've we've done that, let's see. Just make sure I'm going to click on reharmonize. Now we can see we've got some uh, we've got some diminished seventh chords in there. Let's close this window and see what it did. So we've got a bunch of looks like the diminished won the fight there. So let let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so, so what the important thing is here is, I'm going to stop that one. Now what you can do here is you can, you can hit these chords and just play through them to see if they sound right. And you can kind of, the, what you want to make sure is that, that they fit with the melody. You know, uh, the melody should be one of the chord tones. So, so what we could try there is, let's, let's say, let's say I want, to, I want to go there. I could take this, I could take this, uh, I could take that one, that A minus 7 flat 5, that would be like the 2 chord of the G. I could go to the D, let's see what the D7, the D7 flat 9 would go nicely back to the G. I'm going to put another G right there, just so we can hear that. Then we'd have this, let's, let's take a look at this, so it would be like this. The turnaround would be like this. So that would work. This Mapping Total Harmony Pro app has a guy called Bill in it who doesn't want to play gospel music and it seems that neither do the other players. I do like the software but it does need some work and I really wish them well and hope they'll go the extra mile and make this a really robust piece of software. So that's it from me this week. Hit the like button if you like this and remember to subscribe if you didn't already and as I always say, stay tuned and look forward to seeing you soon.